Hi, in my last episode I showed how to design and laser cut this chess set. In this episode I'm going to talk about how to make this combination display shelves and chess board to match your custom chess set. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in my last episode, I did talk about how to make this custom chess set, and then this is a board designed to go with it. So when you're not playing chess, you can use the board itself as a display for your pieces. The shelves inside of the board are clear acrylic so that the light shines through, and the size of the rows is, varies based on the pieces. I have smaller rows for the pawns and larger rows for the major pieces. And then I used the same inlay technique I used on the pieces to inlay ivory and black acrylic into the board itself. And finally, I cut felt on the laser cutter to put on the bottom of the pieces so they wouldn't scratch the board. So I'll talk about how to do all of that in this episode. The main references for my design are the chess pieces themselves, the biggest and the smallest, because I'm going to use those to check the sizing of the display shelves. Each square is one and three quarters inches, and I laid out the eight by eight grid using the alignment tools. This and the square inlays are cut out of three sixteenths inch acrylic, but I have a one eighth inch piece of acrylic, 18 by 18 inches underneath it. These are the squares I'm gonna use for cutting the ivory and the black. They're the same size as what's cut out of the grid, just half as many. And this is the layout of the display shelves. You can see here's how the large pieces will fit. Here's how the small pieces will fit. Two tall rows, two short rows. And these acrylic dividers are created by cutting slots halfway through that you then uh, nest into each other. I need three vertical dividers and three horizontal. Both have a slot in the middle, but then the other two slots are in different locations based on the varying sizes of the rows. As always, I create side views of these pieces and I mark where the slots are because I'm going to use that for the sizing of the sides. Here's the drawing for the sides. At the ends they have uh, interlocking tabs, as you can see here. Two with tabs protruding and two with grooves. But then the interlocking dividers are held in place by slots. They stick through the sides here, and I don't even fuse them in place. They're just held in place by these slots that have been spaced based on the side view of the shelves themselves. Then I make separate cut files for each of the components. Here's the grid. Here's the sides. Every component has to be in a separate drawing for my new laser cutter. I also have a file for cutting the felt, and it's the same size as the base minus an eighth inch in both directions. These cut files are run through a piece of software called RD Works, and that's what translates it into instructions for the laser cutter. You see it here cutting the black inlay squares. It takes about two hours to cut all the pieces of this project. Here you can see one of the long uh, pieces, one of, this is one of the dividers, curling up as it's getting cut from the heat, but that straightens out. And as always, I, I test everything before I leave the shop, and here's the interlocking shelves, and they fit together perfectly. I'm using self-adhesive felt, and I was really lucky here. It cut through the felt and didn't cut all the way through the paper, so that'll be easy to peel off and use. I used turquoise as my accent color, but I also considered fluorescent orange. This is what I would have made the board out of if I'd have gone that way. This is covered with plastic to protect it. So you can't see it really clearly, but this is called Sunset Pearlescent. And it's a very interesting material. It's got a lot of orange veins in it that go nicely with the orange fluorescent that I would have used. And here's what it looks like with the squares laid out. It would have been pretty nice. But I went with the turquoise and I'm happy with that. Because the dividers slot through the sides, I really have to put the whole thing together before I can start actually fusing it. So I put it together, I use my 4x4 granite blocks to hold things in place. 
and then I get out my fusing liquid. This is weld on chemical solvent and I first I welded the corners together and then I went methodically through and welded the sides to the 1 8 inch acrylic that is the top. I let the fusing cure for a couple of hours before I flipped it over to start the next step. I lay out my inlay and I made several mistakes doing this. This is why I've got this process where I lay it out first then I take the grid off and then I'm stacking them up to the side and I see there's an open hole and that's because that square has been stuck in the grid so I pick that square up and I use my whetstone to file off the flashing that had uh, prevented it from being released from the grid and then I finish stacking things up to the side. This way everything is tested and I'll do it right the first time. Then after fusing the top down, the grid down, I fuse the squares and that's all it takes. Now I need to apply the felt and I cut each size out and I held it up to the base so I could see what kind of margin I was shooting for and then the rest of them I would peel them off and I would stick them on the bottom. You have to get it right the first time and uh, it turned out really well. The one and three quarter inch squares with the one eighth inch uh, turquoise margin in between is just the right size for these pieces and the display looks beautiful and it's very stable and uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I have lots of other projects for gaming and gamers so if you're interested please subscribe to my channel.